Colin O'Keefe here for LXBN TV. Just a couple days ago, both the FAA and the White House issued new rules around the use of small drones, or unmanned aerial systems as they're called. Joining me now to break those down, really explain the basics of how, how, these, are, how these could potentially work, is attorney Stephen Hartzell. He's with Brooks Pierce, an author on their blog, digital media, and data privacy law. Uh, Stephen, first off, in the biggest news, the FAA released those proposed rules for small drones or, again, unmanned aerial systems. Uh, among these rules, uh, which ones do you think are particularly noteworthy? So that's a great question. And, you know, the most noteworthy thing of all, I think, is the fact that the FAA has pro finally proposed these rules. It's taken us quite a long time to get here. They really started the process in 2008. So just the very fact of proposing rules is by itself a big deal. Uh, within the proposals that have been made, there's a couple things that I think are pretty significant. One of them is an effort to create, uh, I think, a lower barrier to entry than the industry was thinking that the FAA would do. And what I mean by that is the FAA has proposed a set of rules where it will not take an actual pilot's license to operate uh, drones or small UAS, but instead there will be a separate airman certification process, and there will be a special airman certificate for drone operators, and it will, requ it will require a uh, little less education, no actual flying time in an airplane, different skill sets apply to flying an aircraft uh, when it is a manned aircraft as opposed to an unmanned aircraft. So uh, no medical certificate will be required either, just a self-certification uh, relating to medical. So lower barrier to entry to get more operators in the queue who can ultimately become uh, small US, UAS operators. The other thing that I think that was pretty significant uh, is that the FAA has proposed to create a micro class, sort of a subset of small UAS. And you have to understand small UAS by itself is a subset of all UAS. This is not a comprehensive rulemaking. It's not gonna address all UAS, but it addresses small UAS. And then within small UAS, they propose this micro class for particularly light UAS, which uh, the unmanned aircraft can be, if it's going to be a micro UAS, it can be up to two kilograms. And one significant point for the micro UAS class, assuming that it actually becomes a rule ultimately down the road, is that the micro UAS can be operated over people who are not operating the vehicle. Whereas the way that the rules have been proposed for all small UAS, other than micro UAS, is that they cannot be operated above people who are not actually involved in the operation. So significant limitation until you look at the micro class, in which case that could be a real good thing for certain applications. Mm -hmm. Certainly, certainly. And, you know, like you mentioned, we've been waiting for a long time just for, for any rules at all. And, of course, the FAA isn't the only one coming out with new rules on drones. Of course, as I mentioned, uh, presumably in concert with these proposed FAA rules, the White House released a, a memorandum on drone privacy what should people know about uh, about what's coming out of the White House on this topic? Well, you know, the White House, uh, I think, did a really good thing and coordinated that with the Department of Transportation. Uh, we've known for a while that privacy is one of the major uh, policy issues that's kind of wrapped up in drone operation, of course, along with, with air safety. Uh, but privacy, it's one of these things uh, that I think that the privacy uh, environment surrounding drones kind of wigs people out a little bit because they're, they are mobile vehicles and you might not see them coming. In the same way, when cameras were first in cell phones, I think once people understood why you might want a camera in a cell phone in the first place, the very next thing was, oh my goodness, what, what's this going to mean for our privacy? And a similar thing here is happening with drones. We've even had uh, United States Supreme Court Justice um, voice some concerns about the implications of uh, privacy, uh, of drones in the privacy environment. So the president's uh, memorandum on privacy does a couple of things. One, it clearly tells federal agencies that they need to make sure that they're taking privacy very seriously if they're operating drones and if they are collecting personally identifiable information. They have to take certain steps, make sure that, uh, that they're going to be in control of that information and in control of privacy policy. The other thing that it does is it creates a sort of multi-stakeholder process uh, where the NTIA is going to bring together all sorts of stakeholders, industry members, and so forth, private citizens, and try to hammer out some policies and practices that everybody can kind of agree on to help protect 
uh, private privacy, you know, a private citizen's privacy, as well as other sorts of privacy. Already here we are just a couple days out from the announcement, and, you know, people on uh, sort of on, on both sides of the issue, um, not that there's necessarily two sides to the privacy issue, but there have been people who have already been um, happy with the fact that the president made this announcement, and there are, have also been organizations who have said, you know, this is really going to go nowhere, and it's not going to uh, wind up really protecting privacy at all. So I think that just goes to show that this debate is nowhere near done, but the evidence memorandum certainly at least puts us on a track to have a good debate. Absolutely. As you mentioned, it's good just to get that debate started or I guess continue it or officialize it. So it's good to get those things out there. And then lastly, you know, say you're a journalist who wants to use a drone or a company or even just, you know, an everyday American who wants to take some cool video footage of something nearby. Does this change anything for those looking to to fly their drones right now? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, this doesn't really change anything. It's really the, the status quo is status quo at this point. This is a proposal to adopt rules in the future. It's likely to take at least a year, probably on the order of maybe closer to two, two and a half years to actually get final rules. So for now, the answer is no. The only the only people or entities that are authorized to fly drones in the United States are, number one, private citizens who are engaged in hobbyist flying of model aircraft, and number two, entities or persons who have actually obtained permission from the FAA through the Section 333 exemption process, which is a, a fairly limited pool of, of folks. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that this is going to take some amount of time because, you know, as we see all over the place, drones are, are very big. Journalists are trying to use them. And then, of course, people are going to keep on petitioning the FAA to see if they can get those exceptions. Absolutely. Uh, once again, that was Stephen Hartzell of Brooks Pierce for more of an analysis on these new proposed rules on drones. Be sure to visit their blog. It is at digitalmediadataprivacy.com. Thank you for joining me today, Stephen. Thanks very much. I appreciate it, Colin.